Hello again, everybody. And the news keeps on coming on and on and on. Finally, we had arrested another young man who is 19 and a half years of age. And his name is Menachem Mendel Deutsch. And this man raped, sodomized, did everything to boys in the mikveh in Bells on 15th Avenue by 50th Street in Borough Park. The pressure was so strong that the rabbis in the shul decided to go with him to the police because they figured he'll get caught anyway, and this way he comes as a hero. Now, meanwhile, back in the jungle, what are they doing to his parents, to the parents of the father of the victim? They're threatening him. They're humiliating him. They're deteriorating him. They're doing everything bad so that he goes out of court. I would like to share a story with you. We all know the story that a person, Mr. Mayor Daskalovich, ran around raping boys, doing everything wrong. He came, came to the judge and he said, well, I can't stand trial. So the judge was nice enough to send him into a madhouse, into a hospital, until he can stand trial. But I would like to tell you what happened to the father of the victim. The father of the victim was threatened. One time, I went over to visit the father of the victim to give him moral support. They had a camera outside of his house, a hidden camera, which he didn't know about. They were controlling everybody that comes to his house. The landlord called him up. I want you to know that if Rabbi Rosenberg ever steps in into your house again, I will throw you out. So since then, for two years, I was not able to go visit him and not able to give him moral support. If I had to talk to him, I would have to call him up that he should wait for me three blocks away from his house, which is ridiculous. So the things went on, and the trial went on, and they threw out this child from school. The, the school had pressure from the community. They threw out this child. His child, I think, is still after two years looking for a place where to go to. Then, and they told him, if you drop the case, we'll let you back. Then what happened was they, they threw him out from his apartment. And even though he paid rent on time, everything, they came in and they threw him out. They threatened him. Mr. Charles Hines told him, don't worry, a policeman will go around. It's Mrs. Hannah White who gave him the commitment from Mr. Charles Hines' office that a policeman will go around your house every day. We're still searching for that policeman. I don't even think that he joined the police staff yet. But anyway, what happened was they kept on making him a lot of political pressure. They told his father that if he's going to talk to him, they're going to close down his father's shul. His father is a reputable rabbi with a big shul in Borough Park. And his father had to cut connections with him they threatened everybody that tried to help him. They threatened me, but, you know, I'm an ostracization anyway, so where can they go further? They tried to shoot me here with a bullet, but it just didn't make it because it was on a slant coming from a flying by car. So at the end of the day, <laughs> they can't even aim straight. So I'm still trying to help, you know, clean the community. Now, what happened to the father of the victim after all these threats and everything? Let me tell you what happened to him. He is in a hospital. He is in intensive care, in an emergency intensive care. A week ago, he was on a respirator, knocked out. When I asked one of the people there on the floor who taking care of him, what do you say to him? He says, Rabbi, go home and pray. He needs a lot of prayers. He should be able to walk, make it from his bedside. Needs a lot of prayers. He's in big danger. Then we did a lot of praying. He became a little better. They took off the respirator. But now, unfortunately, he fell back. And he kept on telling me, Rabbi Rosberg, I can't go through, through, the, through, the, through the pressure, what the community is putting on me, on my wife and my children and my father and my mother and my father-in-law and my mother-in-law. I really don't understand. Mr. Charles Hines, this is a question for you. Point blank, answer us. Why? In Harlem, 
if anybody gets raped and the family goes to court, he doesn't need any help. He can just walk in the street. They have a restraining order from the other side, from the other families, the one that was arrested, that in three blocks around, they can't even go next to these people. And why is it by us, everybody, any Tom, Dick, and Harry is allowed and is able to threaten fathers and mothers of the victims and the victims? The answer, my friend, is Mr. Charles Hines, that corrupted man runs Brooklyn. And as long as you'll run it, we will not be in a safe community. It doesn't only have to do with sexual relations. We all remember a story where this big rabbi, his name is Munka Chereva, Rabbi Rabinovich. Rabbi Rabinovich stole from the government millions of dollars on programs. He made the deal, he doesn't go to jail, he's going to pay back, which is a deal that nobody gets. But Mr. Charles Hines is a good friend with Rabbi Rabinovich, he gave him the deal. Or maybe it wasn't Mr. Charles Hines then yet, I'm not that sure in the years, and I don't want to be legally lawsuited, but he had a deal with the DA because he didn't go to sit in jail. It has to be checked out who was doing that, because if all these things stem from an earlier DA, then after Mr. Charles Hines, it's going to continue the same way, so we're in trouble. We need FBI help here. Anyway, he doesn't go to jail. He makes a settlement, he'll pay back. He paid back two times $75,000 or something like that, and then he declared bankruptcy. So now he's not in jail, he stole $18 million, and he's out loose. So let me ask you a question. Why should the rabbi not steal? We have Mr. Charles Hines. We have a brother in the king's house. We can do anything we want. It's not only sexual abuse. The second thing, we have rabbis who sodomize, who do everything wrong, they don't get picked up. Not only don't they get picked up, we, the ones who try to fight against them, are being humiliated, deteriorated. We're being kicked out. I am an ostracization on my 60th birthday. I have no shul to daven in. There must be 100 shuls that are having tax-exempt 501Ks, and the government is giving them the benefit that they can collect sort of like the tax, you know, to write off the tax if you give a donation to the shuls. Does the government know that I don't have where to say my prayers? Do you know why? Because I want freedom of speech. I want to talk about these pedophiles. And where is the government to stop this? Now let's go further. Does a rabbi really have a fear to go and say testimony in a court and lie? Doesn't have any fear. Rabbi Be'er Lashkenazi lied in the court. He was caught lying. He's walking the streets. So now why should Rabbi Leibovitz not lie in the court? Why shouldn't he bring in witnesses that they offered money uh, for him? They, they try to get extort money from him. And if he'll be caught lying, what's going to be? They'll just walk away. They're not going to pay the consequences. And that's why this whole law system is corrupted. Mr. Charles Hines, step down on your own before we're going to make sure the FBI puts you in jail. You are a corrupted man, according to Rabbi Joseph David Krause. You are on the payroll from Mishmer Satsnias, which is an organization called Safeguarding Modesty. They're collecting money from the government, that they're keeping a clean community. And not only don't they have a clean community, they stole and extorted money from every pedophile and kept them on the streets. Everything that I say should be investigated by the FBI. We have a lot of information to share. Do you have the time to listen? Or maybe Mr. Bin Laden, to catch him, was more important. I want to ask you a question. Mr. Bin Laden is caught. He's thrown into the river. Are our children in Brooklyn safe? Are our children in Muncie safe? Are our children in Borough Park safe? Are our children in Curious Joel safe? The answer is no. So what did we gain with the millions and the billions that we wasted to catch Mr. Bin Laden and throw him in the river when there is Mr. Bin Laden's all over in every ritual bed and in every synagogue and in every shul and in every school and every girl's school? We got to get those Bin Ladens out of there too.
Thank you and have a good day.